What is going on college basketball fans? Today we got some big time news because yesterday was the deadline to opt out of the NBA draft and return and play college ball next season. So we got a lot of decisions that were made on the last day of this deadline. I'm ready to give you guys all the news and break it all down. I just want to say subscribe if you guys are new. Hit that like button if you guys enjoy and let's go. All right, our first big returnee, we do have Zach Eady, the reigning player of the year, returning to the Boilermakers next season. Now, now, this came to no surprise to me just because his game does not really translate to the NBA that well and he has dominated college basketball last season he can average 25 and 13 again while earning really good NIL money and come back to a Purdue team that is returning pretty much everybody so they are going to be back with a vengeance next season we'll see if they can actually uh, go far in the tourney this year. We saw when 2018 Virginia did lose to a 16 seed. They came back the next year and won the Natty. We'll see if Purdue can do that or at least come close and make a deep run in March Madness. This is a big time return for Purdue and just big time news in college basketball. Our next returnee, I like to call him the Zach Eady stopper. We have another center in the Big Ten and that is Cliff Amorier. He plays such good defense against Zach Eady and Rutgers always seems to catch Purdue year uh the past two years they've caught Purdue and, and I really like Cliff Amorier's game he is returning to the Scarlet Knights next season and like I said he is the Zach Eady stopper he dunked on Zach Eady a couple years ago he plays good defense on him um I cannot wait to see these two match up once again this upcoming season. Staying in the Big Ten, we have a team that I think might be the best team in college basketball and definitely the best team in the Big Ten, and that is Michigan State. And it is announced that they are returning Jaden Atkins and A.J. Hogard. Now, A.J. Hogard was going crazy in the March Madness tourney last year. I cannot wait to see him return. And they are also returning, this was announced before uh, yesterday, but Tyson Walker and Malik Hall. So four big-time returnees, along with the stacked recruiting class they have coming in. Michigan State is going to be an absolute problem next season. And Tom Izzo has one of his best teams ever. This is going to be a ton of fun to watch. Another team in the Big Ten, we do have the Fighting Alana. They are returning two players, including Terrence Shannon Jr. and Coleman Hawkins, both opting out of the NBA draft and returning to the Alani. And this was an interesting case. I definitely saw this with other players as well, but they were really uh, waiting till the last minute to try to get a extended NIL deal with Illinois before they returned to school so I'm guessing that Coleman Hawkins specifically did get that deal and he is returning to the Alana next season so we'll see if they can build off of that nine seed and first round exit that they had last season and see if they can be one of the top teams in the Big Ten this season. The next player we have returning is a guy that gets my Perry Ellis Extra Year of Eligibility Award of the Year, and that is Javon Quinterly. He is returning to the Alabama Crimson Tide, and this is a new award that I'm going to give out every year. Who is using their Perry Ellis year and staying in college in, and playing college ball until they are 30 years old? Well, Javon Quinterly, this will be his sixth season playing on a college basketball team and he turns 26 I think I said in November so he was going to be playing most of the season as a 26 year old in college basketball that is pretty crazy but he is returning to Alabama that is big time SEC news and they are also returning Mark Sears as well he will be back for his second season at Alabama the original transfer from Ohio he is going to be uh, a really good player for them as well so Alabama get a really good guard returning here on their roster. Speaking of really good guards in the SEC, this was huge, huge, huge news as Devo Davis is returning to be the starting point guard on this Arkansas team. Now, I predicted this a while ago. A lot of Arkansas fans said he's going to the NBA and I wasn't so sure on that and I thought it would be huge if Devo did return to this roster because with all these great transfers coming in that means Keon Minifield the transfer from Washington he's probably going to come off the bench and that is insane because he is a very talented player himself but Devo returning he had a really good tournament he had an amazing game which allowed them to upset the one seed Kansas in the round of 32 uh 
yeah, Devo Davis, he can be a leader on this team, the starting point guard on this team uh, of transfers in Arkansas. In my opinion, they are the best team in the SEC next season. Another really good guard that announced he is returning next season, and this one actually came by surprise to me, but on the defending national champions team, the Yukon Huskies, Tristan Newton, their starting point guard, will be returning next season to play for the Huskies. Now, this is huge because Tristan Newton is a guy who almost averaged like a triple-double. Like, he could definitely have a triple-double or two this season. He is going to be a, a, an amazing point guard once again next season for the Huskies. And this came by surprise to me. Adama Sonogo staying in the draft. Jordan Hawkins, of course, he's staying in the draft. And, and also Andre Jackson Jr. staying in the draft. So, UConn does get one of their starters returning next season. That is Tristan Newton. He is going to be in for a big year and he is going to be that's going to be a really fun backcourt to watch him and Stefan Castle. We got a couple of returnees returning to Creighton University and that is Trey Alexander and Ryan Cockburner. A lot of people say Ryan Cockburner is my twin. You know I sort of see it but not really. Um, Ryan Cockburner, Trey Alexander back for this Creighton team. Also Baylor Shireman announced uh, way earlier a month ago or so that he will be returning for this team. So no more Arthur Kaluma. He is heading to the portal. Ryan Nimhard already transferred over to Gonzaga, but they did pick up a transfer over from Utah State to be their starting point guard in Stephen Ashworth. So this team is going to be really good once again, build off of that Elite Eight appearance from last season they are going to be one of the best, best teams in the Big East Conference once again. Speaking of Gonzaga and Ryan Nemhard, he has a teammate returning and that is Anton Watson. He will be returning for Gonzaga next season and that is going to be a really good front court between him and Graham EK. That is going to be huge and Gonzaga is going to be a problem again next season. Huge return here for the Bulldogs. Uh, another really good two-way point guard returning and that is Jamal Shea returning to the Houston Cougars next season he's going to be playing big 12 basketball for the Houston Cougars and have he has a new backcourt partner there with LJ Cryer that is going to be a ton of fun I called this one way back when LJ Cryer first transferred to Houston I said Jamal Shedd he's going to return to Houston he's going to opt out of the NBA draft and he does uh, he did so yesterday so he will be back uh, playing for Houston next season in the Big 12. Two huge returnees here for the Florida Atlantic Owls, and I don't know how I did not announce this earlier because FAU is going to be maybe a top 10 team next season, definitely a top 15 team preseason, and uh, maybe it's because I already kind of figured that these players will be back, but because these two players are returning, FAU will be returning all five starters from last season's Final Four team, and that include John L. Davis, their starting point guard, and Elijah Martin. So two huge returns for Florida Atlantic. They are going to be a problem next season and probably the best team that's not in a Power 6 conference. We got Rick Barnes returning another one of his players and that is Josiah Jordan James back with the Volunteers next season and Tennessee Loki returning a lot of really good players from last season. Look out for them to be a sleeper in the SEC. I said it that I think Arkansas and Texas A&M are going to be two of the best teams there in the SEC, but, but don't sleep on teams like Tennessee and also uh, Alabama. They are returning quite a few players. Uh, I just feel like Arkansas, Texas A&M, and maybe even a Kentucky team that is going to have a ton of freshman talent coming in are going to be better than those teams. San Diego State coming off of a national championship appearance gets two big pieces of news yesterday and that is the first one is Lamont Butler the guy who hit the game winner in the final four game against FAU to send the Aztecs to the natty is returning to the Aztecs next season and also Jaden Ledee is back as well so San Diego State is going to be tearing it up in the Mountain West Conference next season and are going to be trying to get back to that national title gain. It is not going to be an easy task, but I expect them to definitely make another run 
in the NCAA tournament next season. Look out for the Aztecs. They are returning some studs. That's a lot of the major players returning. I'm going to go ahead and announce a few more players, uh, some notable players that will be returning to end off this video. So we have Blake Henson returning to Pitt. That is a big pickup for them because they have some really good guard, uh, some really good big men talent there. And, and to return one of their star guards there from last year's team that made it to the round of 32 that is huge for coach Jeff Capel also Kevin McCuller returns for the Jayhawks that is really uh, some big news because they kind of had a hole at that small forward spot but now returning Kevin McCuller when he opted out of the NBA draft that kind of fills out their roster perfectly and Kansas is going to be one of the best teams in college basketball once again next season we got Tolo Smith returning to Mississippi State next season he was their best player last year we'll see if Chris Jans can can build on last year's roster and maybe make the NCAA tournament this year with Mississippi State we got two big returnees from another final four team in Miami we got Nigel Pack returning and also Norchad Omir who is a rebound machine these are huge pickups Miami is going to be one of the best teams along with Duke in the ACC conference Tyrese Hunter returning to Texas this one was announced a couple of weeks ago but a very notable name that I thought I would share with you guys here we got PJ Hall returning to Clemson next season Clemson was a team that um, was kind of a bubble team you know definitely had their run throughout uh, the college basketball season so we'll see if maybe they can get their uh, name called on selection Sunday this upcoming season we got Kaisi Tomanyaga returning to Nebraska next season. He is a pure scorer, and that is a huge uh, return there for the Huskers next season for sure. And, and that just about does it. Let me know, who do you guys think had some of the biggest returns from yesterday's deadline? And who do you guys think is your favorites to win the national championship? Like way too early favorites to win the Natty after this news has come out. Out. There are still some really notable names in the transfer portal. Grant Nelson opted out of the NBA draft. He is going to be transferring from his school and heading to a new program, a Power 6 program. I definitely think so. So that is going to be big news as well. But we kind of know what a lot of these teams' rosters are going to look like. Of course, there still will be some big news throughout the portal over the offseason. Um, but we get a good idea about what these teams are looking like. So that's going to do it for this video. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching.